It's great American history. And this is photojournalism, a great art form. Sima Rubin is the curator of this exhibit of Pulitzer Prize winning photographs on display at Maryville University. She is talking about some of the most famous photographs of the last half century. Powerful images, taking us back to a particular moment, an unforgettable event. Saying farewell to heroes, tragedies of a controversial war, the day a new kind of war began. There are also dozens of images we may not recognize, but they too can pack an emotional punch. Every still photograph forever retains that moment. The moving image goes right by you. Rubin's respect for the power of the still image is obvious. Having spent five years preparing this exhibit, and in her fourth year traveling with it, she can speak eloquently about almost every photograph. Here is this woman who obviously is not a young woman. You can tell by her hands and her brow. And yet there is such strength in her in the way she holds on to that tombstone. She's just not tapping it. She's holding it. She's holding him. And um, I feel very strongly about how she feels. When she began this project, Rubin was shocked to discover that a Pulitzer exhibit had not already been done. And it's true. When I went to Columbia School of Journalism, where the Pulitzer uh, Prize, you know, was housed, there were no archives. There was nothing. And so it began, this quest, this search. It was fascinating. And um, eventually, I found all the negatives, I found the living photographers, and I began to interview them and talk to them, and it took years. She found that just as each photo tells a story, each photographer had a story to tell of their own. Three photographers came to the opening of the St. Louis exhibit. Robert Jackson is the man behind this famous picture, but it almost never happened. So the reporter with me I said, you better go call the city desk, tell them that we can't make both of these assignments, you know. <clears throat> we just don't have the time, so we're going to have to hang here. So he went, called the city desk. The guy on the desk was the nephew of the publisher. He said, oh, you can't miss the press conference. He said, you go back and tell Jackson that if he can't make it out there in time, just blow this off and we'll get Oswald when he gets down to the county jail. And we had another photographer down at the county jail to get him when he came in. <clears throat> so he came back and told me this, and I said, I don't, don't believe you're telling me this, but go back and tell him we're not leaving. Jackson's decision to stay put served him well. Uh, they said, here he comes. You know, I could see him coming out. Somebody steps out from my right really fast. Two steps. He, he steps out, fires, I fire. But then I got to thinking later, if I, did I fire too soon or did I fire after Ruby fired? So I had to wait till I got back to the paper and run my film to, to really know what I had, you know, but I felt I had a good picture. Stephanie Welsh was a student intern at a newspaper in Kenya when she became the youngest woman to win the Pulitzer for photography. She was working on a story about the tribal right of female circumcision. I guess I didn't know how complex it was when I started. I just thought, how can this be? How can this be done? And how is this still going on in, in this time period? And so I didn't feel like I had a choice to do it. I felt like it would be wrong not to. New York State. St. Louis amateur photographer Ron Olschwanger is among the elite group of Pulitzer winners. Ever since I was 13 years old and bought a fire department radio, I'd been taking pictures of fires. But he had a feeling the pictures from this fire would be tragically different from any others he had taken. He picked her up and he ran down a flight of stairs, 
pushed his hat back and his mask and was giving her CPR mouth to mouth as they exited the building. And I was as close to him as I am to you and I just snapped the picture. And the manager at the photo uh, mat said, I want to buy these pictures from you, I'll give you $100. I said, no, thank you. I looked at them, went home and showed them to my wife, and she said, you should give this to the paper. It might help save a life teaching somebody to buy smoke detectors. For Olschwanger, winning the Pulitzer was tempered by the death of the little girl. The bookends of this exhibit, an angry picket line from 1942, mail call for a soldier in Iraq in 2004. Hundreds of faces, places, and events in between. It is far from a complete history of the world during those years, but for those who take the time to view this display of history and photojournalism, Curator Rubin promises it will be time well spent. And every time I walk into a new venue where the, uh, the exhibition is mounted, it's like I'm seeing them for the first time. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm.